Polycystic ovarian syndrome, unfortunately, seems to be happening more and more to women. I remember being about halfway in my 20s when I heard of it for the first time, and now I seem to be getting case after case. So if you are getting extremely irregular periods, if you are getting only a few periods a year, if you're noticing that you have anovulatory cycles and you suspect that you may have PCOS, then this is the video for you so you can check out what tests to get to get a diagnosis. Hello my lovelies and welcome to another one of my videos in which we'll be talking about which tests to have run if you suspect that you are having PCOS. Now if you're interested in more topics on PCOS, make sure to subscribe because I've got more videos coming up including the next one that is on the atypical presentation of PCOS. So if you suspect that you have PCOS but you don't actually fit the standard picture, then you don't want to miss that video. There isn't complete agreement on what starts first. Is it the cyst on the ovaries? Is it the hormone imbalance? What is a given is that they both occur. And this is why most practitioners will diagnose PCOS based on two things mostly, ultrasound showing cysts plus blood work that shows that there are excess male hormones or androgens. Sometimes one of these two plus a situation where a woman is not ovulating not falling pregnant or having only a few periods a year is enough for them to diagnose PCOS, but personally I think it's better to get the ultrasounds and the blood work done. The initial test to check for those excess androgens, those male hormones, is testosterone. And you may know testosterone as the male dominant hormone that causes excess hair growth and an increase in libido. And actually we women do need testosterone, just not quite as much. If then testosterone is elevated, which is usually the case with PCOS, secondary tests can be run for DHEAS and androstenedione, which may both be elevated or not in PCOS. If they are, it points more towards PCOS, but if they aren't, it doesn't necessarily say you don't have PCOS. It's really the testosterone that is a big giveaway, together with a couple of other things I'm going to mention as well. Alongside the testosterone, what you want to have checked is AMH, anti-malarian hormone. And you may know this as the menopause hormone. We don't want this one to be too low because it tells us we're running out of eggs. I've got a completely separate video on that. You need to check that out if you have issues with low AMH. But usually with PCOS, you will have high AMH. So it doesn't actually apply the higher, the better. If it is very elevated, that could signal that you have PCOS. You also want to have checked sex hormone binding globulin, which may be lower in PCOS. Again, it may not be, but if it is, it definitely points more towards PCOS. Tests for PCOS aren't usually routinely done. If you have any issues, a practitioner will probably check for estrogen, FSH, AMH, and sometimes the SHBG as well. So what usually tips me off with women is that indeed their AMH is like really high and sometimes they're even like, woohoo, my AMH is really good. And then their SHBG is quite low and they're like, why is that? And then in combination with their charts that show that they either have multiple positive ovulation tests or they have very long cycles, tips me off that PCOS may be playing a role. If then there is also a history of using contraceptives for a longer period of time, then that really makes me wonder, is PCOS happening right here? And I will recommend to get more tests run. Now, if you want to learn how you can spot symptoms and signs of PCOS in your charts, then make sure to have a look at my chart interpretation course. Bundle three is going live soon, and that's the bundle that includes PCOS, but the early bird offer is already up. So if you are interested, you're gonna wanna grab that offer. If you're also interested in comparing PCOS charts with charts that look like early menopause, then you might also be interested in bundle one, and this one is already live, so if you sign up right now, you will have immediate access to the videos and to the worksheets. So as I said, usually with an initial fertility check, estrogen and FSH will also be part of that check. But these are not always changed with PCOS. If they are at all, then estrogen may be high and FSH may actually be low. And if that's the case, if FSH is low and estrogen is higher, that is what tips me off that the menstrual issues are not likely related to early menopause, but more likely to another hormone imbalance, including perhaps PCOS. 
If I'm lucky, then LH has been tested as well, and you will see that LH in PCOS is usually high. But this is something that a lot of women already pick up on because they will notice that in their cycle, they would get several positive LH tests or ovulation tests, or they get a positive early in the cycle and then again later in the cycle, and then they don't ovulate, or they will ovulate much later. Some other tests that might be useful are checking for TSH and T4 to rule out thyroid disorders, also glucose and AC1 to check for diabetes because if you have PCOS then you will likely struggle with insulin resistance which puts you at risk of diabetes and you may want to have prolactin checked just to make sure that your menstrual issues aren't related to elevated prolactin. Some doctors may also run an HCG test just to make sure that you aren't pregnant but if you have been waiting for your period for ages and tested many times for pregnancy and you keep getting negative tests, the chance that you are pregnant aren't great. There are a few exceptions, <laughs> but most likely you aren't pregnant. Another thing they may check for is cortisol just to rule out Cushing's disease or 17 hydroprogesterone to check for adrenal hyperplasia. And that is when the adrenals are just producing extra tissue. And you can imagine if there's extra tissue, then there's more tissue to be producing hormones. So the adrenals are a major part in our hormonal system. So if they're bigger than they should be, there's more tissue and they'll be producing more hormones that can really throw off your hormone balance as well. And then as mentioned, the ultrasounds, of course, you will find that in very clear cases of PCOS, the ovaries may be one and a half to three times larger than they should be, or that there are more than 20 follicles. But I have found that with milder cases of PCOS, there may not be as many cysts, but that the ovaries are compromised enough to really affect hormone balance. So treating them as having PCOS is really important. Now, if you're interested in more videos on PCOS and how to treat it naturally, make sure to click on the playlist on your screen right now. And in the meantime, see you in the next video. Bye.